This transfer window has gone down in history. Messi started a new chapter in his career, moving to PSG, while Ronaldo has rewritten the old one, moving to Man United after 12 years. Because of the transfer of Ronaldo, Varane and Sancho, everyone expects United to get to the semi-finals and try to win the Premier League. 36-year-old Cristiano will be the key person at the club. But will he be useful in the game plan? It's a subject of debate. In today's video, we'll recall star players that return to their home clubs, but comebacks do not always meet the expectations. But before we start, answer a question. How many players took Ronaldo's number 7 after he left Man United in 2009? 4, 5, 6 or 7? Write your answers in the comments below. Matsumos, Bayern Munich Kumos was trained at the Munich Academy. Since childhood, he was a promising player. In the summer of 2007, at the age of 19, he was included in the first team, but was unable to beat Lucio and Demichelis. Player was unhappy with that, so next summer he moved to Jurgen Klopp's Borussia. At Dortmund, he won the Bundesliga twice. Side by side with Subotic, they set a record of only 22 considered goals in a season. Later, he became a runner-up in the Champions League and a winner of the World Cup in Brazil. At that moment, Mats was a reliable stopper with great positioning and tackling. Despite interest from Man United and Barca, the PVP captain decided to move to Bayern. He was still winning titles for two years, but then he lost his pace and faced the situation, because of which he had once left the club. If the club bosses trusted older player when Mats was young, 11 years later, young Sule and Luca Hernandez were more appreciated. Without much hesitation, Hummels moved back to Dortmund. It turned out to be a good decision, as till today he is the heart of the Dortmund defense and the fifth by the matches played for the club. Thierry Henry, Arsenal, 2012 after his move from Turin to London, Henri became one of the best forwards of his time. He had no weaknesses, he was scoring goals as a routine, he could run half the pitch and make long shots. Alongside Vieira, Bergkamp and Pires, he became a part of the invincible team to win the Premier League with no defeat. In the 2006 Champions League final against Barcelona, they could have done even better, but at the end of the match they conceded two goals. Henri lost two great moments to score in that match and probably decided that his only chance to win Euro Cups was a move to Barca. Next year, Henri scored even more goals and moved to Catalonia. With Messi and Eto'o in three seasons, the Frenchman won not only the Champions League but also six other trophies. After fulfilling himself in Europe, Thierry moved to the USA. But during the winter break, he decided to help his native Arsenal. Henri was loaned out from New York for four months. By that moment, Arsenal had been unable to climb higher than third place. The day before, they had lost to Fulham, conceding at the end of the match. So Henri's second debut was even more valuable. Ten minutes after coming off the bench in the FA Cup match against Leeds, Henri received a superb pass from Song. He stopped the ball like in his best times and sent it to the far corner. Then he ran towards Arsene Wenger under the powerful noise of the Emirates. Yes, Thierry left very soon and the team finished the season with no trophies, but even today, the hug of the two legends is a rare joy for the long-suffered Arsenal fans. Gerard Piquet, Barcelona, 2008 Barca let the 17-year-old Piquet go when Man United made a good offer. The defender had little time on the pitch, but he was happy to learn from top players under the management of Alex Ferguson. With no real chance in the first team, because of bulletproof Ferdinand and Vidic, the already experienced defender decided to go back to Catalonia. This was the best decision in Piquet's career because of two things. Firstly, the coach played him in pairs with Puyol. Secondly, the coach's name was Pep Guardiola. By 24, Piquet had won every possible title and grown into one of the best defenders in the world, with great positioning, heading and even finishing. When Puyol left, he became one of the main heroes at Barca. 
For example, after the embarrassing defeat from Bayern, he agreed that the team had declined and that he was ready to leave if the club needed new name. Recently, Piquet has been injury prone, losing his best form. However, he does love his club and is ready for sacrifices. Before the new season, he agreed to cut his salary, so Barca could register Depay and Eric Garcia. Kaká, AC Milan, 2013 The Brazilian was the jam in the star squad of AC Milan and Ancelotti's genius trequartista. Playing with Pirlo, Catuzo, and Seydorf in the midfield, he was in search of Shevchenko and Inzaghi all the time, though he was able to finish an attack all by himself. Kaká caught worldwide recognition in 2007. After humiliating the Man United defense in the Champions League semi-final and assisting in the final, the midfielder got the golden ball. In the summer of 2009, he believed in Florentino Perez's project to create new Galacticos at Real Madrid. First season in Madrid was quite successful for Kaká, but next year he was injured during the pre-season. The new manager, José Mourinho, played Mesut Ozil in the Brazilian's position. Press claimed the 67 million worth transfer to be a failure, and Kaká became a player who was always waiting for his chance. But he never got it and returned to San Siro after four years in Madrid. He was warmly welcomed as a reviver of Rossoneri, but Kaká was far from his best form, just like the whole team. Maxes and Nesta had nothing in common, and Muntari and De Jong didn't provide Kaká with reliability. Kaká's talent was only enough to become the second top scorer with nine goals. AC Milan was knocked out from all tournaments that year and finished out of Euro Cup zone for the first time in 15 years. At the end of the season, the Brazilian accepted the idea to revive his career in Europe was a failure and he returned to his home club São Paulo where he played for six months before leaving to the USA. Gareth Bale, Tottenham, 2020 in 2007, the Welshman moved from Southampton to Tottenham as a left back. Thanks to his athleticism, he was able to close the whole flank, but only by 2010 had he become a first-team player. That's when he played the main match of his career in London. At San Siro against Inter, Bale scored a hat-trick and overran Mike Cohn, who was considered one of the best on his wing. Mostly thanks to that performance, Madrid paid a record 101 million euros in 2013. Bale missed the start of the season because of injury, but later he fit in the attacking trio with Ronaldo and Benzema, scoring an increasingly important goal in the Champions League final. A year later, Los Blancos repeated their European success and Bale even scored more goals. However, by the end of 2017, Gareth's presence in Madrid was called a failure. One of the versions was that he never got used playing in a team where he was not the top star. Later, he only showed rare glimpses of his talent. At the start of the last season, he returned to Tottenham, probably to gain form before the Euro 2020. Press was shouting that Gareth was smiling again in North London, but nobody expected a sensation from his loan. However, he scored 11 goals in 920 minutes. But even at the club where he was the star player, football was just business for him. For the FA Cup match against Everton, he told Mourinho he had an injury. And on the match day, he posted nice training. This was when the last chance for the loan extension disappeared. After the Euro, he returned to Madrid to earn 700,000 euros per week at a club where he didn't even play half of all possible matches. No doubt, his last day of contract will become the last day of his career in Madrid. Andriy Shevchenko, AC Milan 2008, Namo Kiev 2009 In 1996, Valery Lobanovsky returned to Dynamo and created a lethal weapon out of a promising Shevchenko. 19-year-old Sheva's hat-trick against Barcelona attracted the top clubs. In the 98-99 season, Sheva became the top scorer in Ukraine and the Champions League alongside Dwight York. Dynamo played its historic semi-final that year. Soon, the Ukrainian moved to AC Milan, becoming one of the top forwards in the world. He won the Champions League and every possible trophy in Italy. 
In 2005, he was included in the FIFA 100 list as a Golden Ball and Golden Boot holder. Just like Kaká, Shevchenko wanted more. In 2006, he moved to Chelsea, unconsciously ending his European career. Apparently, the problem was the hernia he got at the World Cup. After the surgery, the 29-year-old player didn't last long, losing his place to Drogba and Salomon Kalou. According to the press, Andre had serious disagreements with Mourinho about the tactics. After two failed seasons at Chelsea, the Ukrainian decided to revive his career with a one-year contract at Milan. But Ancelotti didn't really need it. Alexander Pato had already taken the number seven, a place in the lineup, and all the goals. At AC Milan, Andre scored just twice in the Coppa d'Italia and the UEFA Cup. This made Sheva move back to Dinamo after 10 years of absence. On his debut, the 33-year-old forward scored the two of his 53 goals that were to come. He scored a memorable goal against Inter in Champions League, though the Kiev team lost 1-2. For three seasons in Kiev, Dinamo was finishing second after Shakhtar. Yet they played in the Europa League quarter-final for the first time. They got there thanks to Shevchenko's goal against Man City. His last goals were also scored in the Ukrainian capital. Two headers for the Ukraine national team in the home Euro 2012 against Sweden. In Euro 2020, Dovbik scored a header against Sweden, and Shevchenko saw that from the bench as a manager. Andrei Arshavin, Zenit 2013. At the beginning of the 2000s, Zenit's attack with Arshavin, Kerjakov and Bistrov scared all other Russian teams. The main hero was Arshavin, thanks to his pace, vision, passing and finishing. 2006-2008 was the best period in his career. At last, Zenit won the title at home. And next season, they defeated Bayern in the UEFA Cup semi-final and clinched the title from Rangers in the final. The Euro 2008 quarter-final is another story. Torbinski scored the second goal from Arshavin's assist in the extra time, and Andre scored the third goal himself. Even Barcelona called Zenit concerning Arshavin, but in January 2009, he moved to Arsenal. Russia never won titles in four years, but he scored 23 goals in 105 games, including the memorable poker against Liverpool, the long shot against Man United, and a last-minute goal against Barca in the Champions League. Despite his talent, Arshavin was not always a starting lineup player, as he wasn't a hard-working player, nor had strong physical attributes. Andre's first return to St. Petersburg was in February 2012. He played 11 matches in three months, scoring three goals, including a goal against CSK. The game won them a title. The second return was in the summer of 2013, Arshami scored in the very first match, becoming a first-team player for six months, until Spalletti resigned. Vilas Boas, on the other hand, took the midfielder's age and form into considerations, and not his talent or achievements. In the 14-15 season, Andre scored only twice in seven matches. Zenit won the league and let the legend go with all honors. However, it was obvious that Arshami was leaving the club without living up to the expectations. Fernando Torres, Atletico Madrid 2015 In 2000, Atletico got relegated to Segunda for the first time. Managers had to turn to the academy players, as there was not much choice. The fan favorite Torres debuted as the third youngest player in the club's history and scored the only goal against Leganes. In 2002, the Colchoneros returned to La Liga and El Nino was their top star. At the age of 19, Nando became the youngest captain and scored 19 goals in 35 matches. But Atletico was still a mediocre team. The situation got better with the arrival of Costinha, Maniche and Aguero. But in 2007, Torres decided that his ambitions were higher than the club. He moved to Liverpool and immediately became the league top scorer among the foreigners. However, his partnership with Gerrard brought no trophies. In the pursuit of titles, Torres moved to Chelsea in 2011, repeating Shevchenko's and many other steps. He could not score for embarrassing 24 matches, but eventually he won the Champions League, Europa League and the FA Cup. After a dull and short period in AC Milan, El Nino went back to Madrid, agreeing to play a supporting role. 
In four seasons at Atletico, he scored only 27 goals in 107 matches. His penultimate game before the contract expiration was the Europa League final 2018. But Atletico humiliated Marseille without Fernando, though the 34-year-old played symbolic minutes at the end of the match. Later, he acknowledged that his only trophy at Atletico was the most important in his career. When a player with the top European title says that, there's no doubt he loves his club. Paul Pogba, Manchester United, 2016 the Frenchman joined United in 2009. The club saw his unbelievable talent and decided to make him a part of their youth system. Two years later, Paul occasionally played for the first time. According to the player, Ferguson regularly promised him a place in the squad and it was Sir Alex's fault that Paul left Man United. In 2011, the manager preferred to play Park Ji Sung and Rafael against Blackburn. After this, Pogba left. Mino Raiola organized a transfer to Juventus, where he became a top player. In 2016, United paid a record 105 million euros to return the Frenchman. As a result, the price tag has been keeping him under pressure for already six years. Pogba is a top midfielder, though he doesn't possess tough and sliding tackle. The balance was achieved only last year when Solskjaer used him on the left flank. Pogba was cutting into the center to play with Bruno, while the back was covered by McTominay. It is yet unclear how his role will change with the arrival of Ronaldo, but theoretically Pogba and Fernandes can feed Ronaldo with passes, just like Kroos and Modric in Madrid. Obviously, the return of the top players to their teams have not always turned out to be what the fans and players expected. Whose fate will repeat Ronaldo with his comeback to Old Trafford? Share your thoughts on Ronaldo in the comments. And do not forget to like and subscribe. See you soon. I'm afraid I lose you if I